is like you, Lord, in all the earth. Matchless love and beauty, endless worth. But nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't Your presence is heaven to me. Oh God, your presence is heaven to me. You're the treasure of my
You said to think on the things that are lovely, the things that are just, the things that are noble, the things that are a good report. And if there is any virtue, we're thinking on these things this morning. We're thinking on goodness. We're thinking on the mercy of God. We're thinking on the on the provision of God. Everything you've done, God, we acknowledge you this morning. Everything that you've done, we thank you this morning. Every door you've opened. We thank you this morning. Every way that you made, we thank you this morning. Hallelujah. You are majestic and you are mighty. Hallelujah. And we say thank you, Father. Thank you for your praise, for the opportunity to praise you. Thank you for nature. Thank you, Lord, for wind. Thank you for rain. Thank you for everything, God, that you made. Because when you made it, you said it was good. Father, we thank you. And everything you made, you said it was good. And nothing you made, you nothing you made, it was not good in your presence, God. We thank you this morning that everything you made is good. And we're so grateful, Lord, that we are your seed. We are your offspring. Hallelujah. And you dwell on the inside of us. And you live in us. And work through us and we yes, praise you praise hallelujah. hallelujah I can do nothing apart from you God your word declares abide in me and my word abide in you and if you ask anything according to my will I shall do it says the Lord and we thank you this morning we thank you this morning that your will is being done in our lives we thank you this morning that your will is being done in our lives we thank you this morning God that you our God, hallelujah, and your will is being done in our lives. Your word declares, God, that to seek you first the kingdom of God, and all that is within, uh, in his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto us. Your kingdom, God, uh, your kingdom is within us, and we praise you this morning, God, that your kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And Father, we thank you that your kingdom uh, is in us, God. We thank you that your word word is in us and yes. we thank you that your power is in us and we yes. thank you that you're displaying your power through us and you displaying your word through us and your character yes. and your nature is displayed through us God and yes. we glorify you with our gifts we yes. glorify you with our talents we glorify you with the with the gift that's on the inside of us and we ask that you continue to stir it up God yes. stir up the gift of yes. God on the inside of us yes. God let that thing come alive God yes. I decree and declare on this morning, God, that that thing will come to fruition right now in our life because your word declares that the gifts and callings are without repentance, God. And we're grateful this morning that we're going to the assignment, the assignment room. We're going into the assignment room and we're carrying out the assignment that you called us to carry out. I'm grateful this morning, God, that, Lord, we don't have to be apologetic for what you call us to be and what you want us to be because greater is he that is on the inside of us yeah. than he that is in the world and so God this morning uh, yeah. we just thank you for the gift keys this morning, what we have to offer to this world, yeah. to make this world a better place, My we're God. grateful this morning God uh, yeah. that when we open our mouths we glorify you with our speech uh, yeah. when we open our ears uh, we glorify you with our hearing uh, when we move our feet we glorify you with every step that we take, Father we're grateful. grateful. Hallelujah. That Hallelujah. we are purified and cleansed by your word. Yes, we are purified and cleansed through your word. Yes, Father, we thank you this morning uh, that God. there is no good thing uh, that you will hold withhold from uh, us. Uh, yes. We are your children. Uh, yes, we are your children. Uh, yes, we are your offspring. Uh, yes. We worship you uh, worship and we adore you this morning uh, yes. and we tell you we love you. Uh, yes. We tell you we love you. Uh, yes. We tell you we adore you. Uh, yeah. We tell you we praise you uh, and we magnify you. Uh, yeah, we God. praise you this morning. Uh, we you thank you this morning. Uh, thank we God. thank you for cleansing our 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 nation, God. Uh, yeah. There's a washing and a cleansing and a purging of our nation. Uh, yeah. We decree and declare this morning, God. Uh, alignment in our state. Uh, yeah. Alignment in our nation. Uh, yeah. Alignment, God, in our country. Yeah. We yeah. thank you this morning, God, uh, that, the, that, the, that the true worshipers uh, yeah. are worshiping you in spirit uh, yeah. and in truth, God. Uh, we thank you, Father, yeah. that, you're, that you're blessing us and you're teaching us to love again, God. Yeah. And that 
that we love our neighbor as we love ourselves, God. We thank you this morning, God, that there's a realignment, God, in our nation, God, that they will come back to you, God, and they will turn to the God that lives on the inside. Father, we thank you that it's prayer that is bringing us back, God. We thank you, Father, that we are acknowledging you before everything, God. There will be never be nothing that will take your place. Father, we praise you this morning. Father, we worship you this morning. You are worthy. You are worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. I come to glorify you. You're worthy. Yes, God. Yes. Come on, you're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, I know. I know that our lives have already started, but we we're in a vein right now. We're just gonna give God a few more minutes of our time in prayer. Come on, just thank God for everything He's done, everything He's doing right now. Come on, God is so good. Come on, He's been so kind to us. He's been so gracious to us. And we owe him a praise this morning. Come on, we owe him a praise this morning. That's it, that's it, that's it. We owe him a praise this morning. Come on, he's been so kind and so good and so gracious to you. Come on, you owe him a praise this morning. We are so indebted to God this morning. Come on, we, we owe him so, so much because we, 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 we know God. We know that he's given us so giving up his son for us God and for us to be redeemed and for us to be restored and for us to be revived and we're so grateful this morning hallelujah we're so grateful this morning hallelujah we thank God for our hearts being pure we thank God for our hearts being pure there's no malice there there's no deceit there there's no bitterness there but our hearts are pure our hearts are clean our hearts are purged come on hallelujah word the Lord said who can ascend to the heel of God he that has clean hands and a pure heart we are grateful this morning that God is purging us right now with his word come on he's purging us with his word and everything that was that was in me that's not like God is being removed right now come on, it's being removed right now Come on, every toxic thought is leaving my mind right now. Come on, every toxic thought, come on, I take control of my mind and I think the things of God. Come on, I think the things of God. I take control of my thought process and I think the things of God. Come on, I think the things of God. Hallelujah. Come on, I think the things of God. My mind is not rambling. My mind is not going in and out. My mind is not confused this morning but I think the things of God come on I think the word of God come on it is God's word that's transforming my thinking come on it's God's word that's transforming my thinking I'm no longer a slave to sin I'm no longer a slave to my condition but God is transforming my mind even as I'm talking now my mind is being transformed even while I'm standing in the presence of God my mind is being straight transformed right Right now, I'm being renewed by the spirit of my mind. Come on, I'm being renewed by the transformation of my mind. Come on, I don't think the way I used to think. My thought process is shifted. My thought process is shifted. And I worship God that my mind is pure. My mind is calm. My mind is peaceful. My mind is serene. Hallelujah. God, we worship you for a pure mind. My God, my we worship you for a pure mind. Pure mind. Everything in me. Yes. Everything in me. Hallelujah. Everything in me. Everything in me. You are the God of a thousand generations. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Everything in me. Glory to God. Come on, I know many of you that are online this morning have joined our 10 a.m. worship and I want to encourage you right there right here right now in your home right where you are just lift your hands and begin to give God some praise come on begin to give God some praise 
glory. Give, give God some honor. Come on, right where you are. Come on, you may not have could not, may not have been able to get into the house this morning, but because you are God, you because you are the church of the living God. Come on, and He resides in you. Come on, right where you are. Lift your hands uh, and tell God thank you. Come on, tell God thank you for everything He's done for you. Come on, we're not complaining about nothing this morning. We're not complaining about anything this morning. But we are praising God for everything. Come on. We are praising God for everything. Come on. Praise God for everything. Stop worrying about any little thing that can offset you, that can upset you. Come on. But this morning, put your mind on God. Come on, put your mind and your focus on him this morning and what he is to you this morning. Come on, come on. There's no bitterness and confusion in us. Come on, come on. Frustration has to go. Come on, it's not your portion. Come on, come on, come on. It has to go. What are you frustrated about this morning? Come on, let that thing go this morning. Release it this morning. What are you upset about this morning? Release it and let it go. Come on, because you serve a great God. Come on, you serve a magnificent God. You serve a massive God uh, and there's no problem you have that God can't fix uh. come on there's no problem that you have that God has not already fixed come on it's already done uh, in your favor come on and all you have to do is praise him for what has already been done uh. come on whatever it is you desire I thank God that I already have it come on whatever you desire I thank God that I already have it I'm not waiting on it uh, but I already have it is that my possession is in my disposal come on and I have it now come on I have it now I tell God thank you that I already have my healing I already have my deliverance I already have my restoration I already have a change in every area of my life come on I'm grateful this morning I'm grateful this morning if you don't do anything else this morning tell God how grateful you are I'm grateful I'm grateful this morning I'm grateful that I can breathe. I'm grateful that I can see. I'm grateful that I can hear this morning. God, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy this morning. You are worthy this morning. You are worthy this morning. And I lift my voice this morning in total adoration. I lift my voice this morning in exhortation. I lift my voice this morning in praise. I lift my voice this morning because you are God. You are God over my life. You are God over my children. You are God over my family. You are God over my circumstances. You are God over my condition. God, great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I have greatness on the inside. And I worship you. I adore you. I glorify you. I exalt you. You are the only true and living God. You are God. You are God. You are God. Come on, you are God. Come on, God. We praise you. We exalt you. Come on, you are God. I'm not worried. You are God. You got me. You are God. You sustain me. You are God. You heal me. You are God. Come on, tell him you God. You are God. Let him know he's God over your problem. He's God over your sickness. He's God over it. He's God over it. He's taking it. He's taking it. He's taking it. I'm not worried. I don't know what you've been concerned about this week. And frankly, it's not none of my business. But what I can tell you this morning, that God is greater. Come on, what I can tell you this morning, that God is greater. Come on, he, what I can tell you this morning, that God is greater. And the minute, the moment you wasted thinking about what what's going on in your life, God had already fixed it. Come on. And all you need to do is tell him, thank you. All you need to do is this morning and tell him, I already got it. Come on. I'm thankful this morning. I got it. Come on. I don't know what you need, but I got it. Come on. I already got it. I already got it. And all my job is to do this morning is praise you. All my job is to do this morning is worship you. All my job to do this morning is to uplift you. You are called Come on, you are God. You are God. You are Elohim. You are El Shaddai. You are the great I am. I worship you. I adore you. I exalt you. You are my God. You are my Father. In me. 
being sourced. Right. You are the source of my supply. Hey, hey. You are the source of my supply. Yes, There's nothing greater than you. Great. There's nothing bigger than you. Hey. There's nothing complicated oh, that you can't handle. Your word declare hey. is my hand short. Hey. But God, this morning, oh. I yield to you. Hey. I surrender to you. Surrender. I tell you this morning. Thank come you. on. I gave you this morning. Jesus. You can't go home with that. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, you can't go home with that. No, no, no. Whatever you were concerned about this week, let it go. Let it go. Let it go, let it go right now. Let it go right now. Hallelujah. Come on, that's not God. Worry, it is not God. That's not God. God can't work in your worry. No, no, no. He can't work in your worry. No, he can't. Come on, he's not moved by your worry. My God, God. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. No, he got you. Yeah. Come on, say, God got me. God got Come on, mean it. God got me. God got me. You believe he got you. He got you. He got me. Stop letting external circumstances cloud your view of God. Come on, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go from your mind. Let it go out of your view. Come on, those of you who are watching me online, let that thing go. Let it go, let it go. You've been worrying about it, it's caused you stress, it's caused you frustration, it's caused you pain, it's caused you anger, and all types of emotions are, are all over the place, and maybe your equilibrium is off, but I decree and I declare this morning that God is reviving you right now. Come on, God is reviving you right now. Come on, say, I'm revived. God is reviving my mind. He's reviving my spirit. He's reviving my heart. Come on. And when God revives you, he gives you an energy that you can't explain. Come on. He gives you a joy that, and a peace that surpasses all your understanding. Come on. You can't reason this thing out. But I praise God this morning. You can't reason this thing out. Stop trying to figure out how it's going to work. I'm trying to figure out when it's going to work. But I trust God that I'm in the right place at the right time. On time with the right people. Come on, God has already done it. Come on, he's already done it. And all I'm going to tell you this morning is that this today, the time in this earth that we live in got to catch up with God's time. It's got to catch up with your kairos. And I decree and declare that your kairos is ahead of you. Your kairos is ahead of you. God's timing is ahead of you. And it's already worked in your favor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Just thank you. Thank you, Heaven. In your prayer time, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I already have it. Thank you. Because when you say, God, thank you, you're telling God, thank you for what he's given you. I got it. I got it. So thank you, Lord, I thank you. Yes. Thanksgiving, thank the Bible said, when we enter into the presence of God, we come into his gates, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, yes. and into his courts with praise. And the Bible goes on to say, and be thankful unto him. Come on. Be thankful unto who? God. God. Be thankful unto him and glorify his name. Yes. Magnify his name. Yes. For the Lord is good. Yes, he is. Come on, that's what the scripture said. The Lord is good. It didn't say come into his presence with sadness. No, no, no. It didn't say come into his presence with complaining. No, no. It didn't say come into his presence with excuses. Uh -huh. It said come into his presence with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And it's into his courts with praise. Yes. And be thankful unto him. My God, I thank you. Why? Because when I go into the presence of God, I have everything I need. Yes. Why? Because his presence is in you. Yes. Why are you worried? Yes. That's what I keep hearing. Why are you worried? Let it go. Let it go. The Bible said, does worry add one cubic to your day? Why are you worried? Let it go. Why are you anxious? Let it go. Come on, if you're watching online, put that in the chat. Yes. Let it go. Let it go. Let it put go. it in big bold letters. Yes. Let it go. Let it go. Come on, let it go. Yes. Yes. Let that thing go. Let that person that's been 
weighing on your mind. Let them go. They belong to God. Come on, they belong to God. Why are you worried? Let them go. He can do more than you can do. Let it go. I challenge you. Let it go. Come on. Let it go. I'm letting it go. Say it with me. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. Come on, you got to you got you got to say it because if you say it, you hear you, yourself saying it, and it's something about when you say it and you hear yourself saying it, and you say it enough, you'll believe what you're saying. Oh, yeah, Come on, yeah. let it go. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it Come go. Come on, I'm letting, I don't know what it is. I'm letting it go. 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 Letting it go. Come on, I'm letting it go. I need my sanity. Come on. I need my sanity. I'm letting it go. I need my mind. Come on. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. Let it go. Depression. I'm letting it go. Come on. Worry. I'm letting it go. Anxiety. I'm letting it go. Let 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 it go. Please. You feel better. Yes. Let it go. You feel better. Yes. 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 Come on. You got to keep saying. You got And you got to keep telling yourself all day that God is greater. God is greater. Come on. You got to keep telling God, reminding yourself that God is greater. God is great. Come on. God is greater. God is great. He's greater than everything. Yes, he is. Come on, he's great. You sitting up worrying and God got it worked out. Come on. Yeah, yeah, you sitting yeah, up yeah. worrying and God got it worked out. Yeah, he said, I'm your yeah, shepherd. Yeah, yeah. And you shall not want. Yeah, yeah. I, lead, I lead you into green pastures. Green Come on. Pastures. You got to understand. And what translation say it said, lush green pastures. You got to understand that the greenest means production. The greenest means provision. Yeah. And God said, I lead you there. Because yeah. I'm your shepherd. And then it goes on to say, and then I take you along. Quiet streams. Yeah. That means there's a quietness in your mind. Uh, that uh, means there's a peace that surpasses all of your understanding. Yeah. That's the God that we serve. Hallelujah. And He said, "Your cup run over." Ooh. It's not just something we. It's not a cliche. It's not just something we quote. It's not just a poem we read. Do you really understand that when you read the song, it's a song of God. Psalms is the songs of God. Yes, it is. And God's word is. He's telling you what I am to you. He's telling you what I'm doing for you. When you read it and let it minister to you. Yeah, yeah. Say your cup. Mm. Run it over. My God. Surely goodness and mercy. Ooh. It didn't say evil. It said surely goodness and mercy Ooh. shall follow you all the days of your life. That means as long as you are on the land of the living goodness and mercy shall follow you because the Lord is your shepherd. So why are you walking in fear? Why are you walking in fear? Why are you moved by the doctor's report? Why are you moved by the lawyer's report? Why are you moved by something that has been said to you? Somebody's opinion. Come on. Why are you moved by that? Yes, God. He said, goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy. shall follow you all the days of your life. Shall follow you all the days of your life. My God. Oh, let it follow. 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 We worship God. Let it go. Come on, I'll let it go. I don't know what you came in here with. And like I said, frankly, I don't care. Yes. And what you're dealing with, those of you watching online, it don't even matter. We're not praying problems, we're praying solutions. Yeah. We're not praying problems, we're praying solutions. We're not praying questions, we're praying answers because yeah. the Bible got all the answers you need. The Bible has all the solutions you need. We're not praying conditions. We're praying results. Come on, everybody need results. Amen. When you come into the house, you won't looking for a result. You're not looking. Come on, you're not looking for uh, somebody for somebody to pity your condition. You're looking for results. Come on, say I need results. I need results right now. Come on, I need instantaneous results. Yes, God. That's what I'm looking for. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. 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 Yes, God. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
God this morning for him making a man he's made a way amen he's made a way amen nothing like sound the sound of a baby everybody feeling amen? amen everybody feeling great this morning what an amazing prayer and intercession time we had this yes, morning is, yeah. god is so good yeah. and so gracious yeah. as i said earlier right before the worship team came i said let it, go. let it go let it go i don't know what it is i don't care what it is let that thing go let it go, let it go. the opinions of others let it go yeah Anything that may have been a concern this past week, let that thing go. Let it go. Amen. Yes. Let it go. Amen. So come on, say, I've, I've let it go. I've let it go. Amen. Amen. Let it go. I thank God for each and every one of you this morning that's in the house. Grateful for my wife this morning, Lady T, and my, my family, my children. Amen. Amen. And thankful for our leadership team, Pastor Smith, this morning. And um, Sister Smith, in her absence, we're praying for her. Amen. This morning, I'm grateful for our prophetess in the house this morning, yeah. prophetess Pamela Williams. Yeah. Amen, Brother Jerry. We're grateful for you all this morning. And God is just so good and so gracious this morning. And everyone that's joining us, wherever you are joining us or watching us, uh, from the comfort of your home, or you may be have may have have had to work this morning, uh, and you're able to just listen in. Or for those that will listen at a later time, we're grateful for you. Uh, being a part of our worship experience this morning. Amen. We're grateful this morning. Pastor Smith, I just want to say to you, I uh, was very, very, very blessed and inspired by your message on last Sunday. And I, I, I pondered on it a couple of times this week. And uh, I even talked about it, I think, one day on my, on my, my call. And uh, that question came back to my mind quite a bit this week. How did I get here? <laughs> Amen. And then just the process of drifting from God. Yes. And so what a powerful message okay. um, that you God blessed bless the people with on last yes. week. Amen. And uh, it was a timely word. Amen. 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 I want to uh, give you a couple of, uh, several passages of scripture. You might want to jot these scriptures down as I read through them. They're not long. Um, the, the readings are not long, but I'm giving you a little bit, um, quite a bit to read. So I'm going to give you this so you can just kind of in your in your prayer and devotion time, you can read um, this for yourself. All right. I want to go to what, what we have, what I have called, what I have called our theme scripture for the year, um, Romans 12 and 2. Uh, and we're going to begin there and then we're going to read John 4 the gospel of John chapter 4 verse 24 I'm just going to give you these scriptures real quick and then, we'll, and then, and then I'll go into the reading uh, so Romans chapter 12 verse 2 Wrong, uh, John chapter 4 verse 24 John chapter 8 verse 31 and 32 and then John 14 and 6 I'll give them to you one more time Romans 12 and 2 the gospel of John chapter 4 verse 24 gospel of John chapter 8 verse 31 through 32 and the gospel of John chapter 14 verse 6 alright and I'm going to read all of this out of the New King James translation all right, so those are the scriptures that, we, that, that uh, we're going to uh, discuss and talk on this morning. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove 
what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect and perfect will of God. And then we'll go over to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 4. Chapter 4 and verse 24. It says, in the wrong book. John chapter 4, verse 24. All right, it says this. It says, but God, and God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For God, and God is a spirit. This is the words of Jesus. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. All right? Then we'll move over to John chapter 8, four, verse, four, four chapters over. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those, <clears throat> excuse me, to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in me and my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And then our last verse of scripture on this morning is John 14 and verse 24. He who does not love me does not keep. And who do, who, he who does not love me does not keep my words. Is that, is that the right verse? I don't think it's the right verse I'm looking for. Another way, not the right verse I'm looking for. I'm going to find that verse and look for me and get that into you. That's not the one I'm looking for. The actually the one I'm looking for is when Jesus said that I am the truth, the way and the light. That I think that's verse yeah, verse it's verse six. Yeah. Okay, so I had the verse wrong. All right, so it's, it's verse six. Thank you. Um, I am the way, <clears throat> the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, I want to stop there for a moment and, and notice in John, especially in the passages of John, all of the verses I gave you in John, they all deal with what? Truth, right? All of them deal with truth. And then when you read John, when you read in John, where it talk, in John chapter 14, where it talks about Jesus said, I am the truth. Truth is... Uh, you know, uh, it is, it, I am is, is a name of God, all right? That, the Bible tells us when Moses asked God, who should I tell Pharaoh, who should I tell Pharaoh um, sent me, who, whom should I tell Pharaoh that sent me to, to you? And he said, tell him that I am sent you. And so I am is the name of God. And so anything that follows I am, it, it, it is a, it's connected to the name of God. So Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, the light. I am the bread, and 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 I am the true vine, and, and the list goes on and on. But he says, I am the truth and the way. Come on, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And also, it talks about in John chapter four. It talks about. Um, the woman, this is where the woman that met Jesus at the well, uh, she was actually having a conversation with Jesus concerning the location, whether where they should worship. And then that's when Jesus said, woman, the hour has come and is now where the true worshipers shall worship the Lord in spirit and truth. So in other words, he would let her know it's not about lo geographical location. It's not about uh, what ethnicity group you are part of, the, the, the true worshipers, the hour has come and is now where the true worshipers worship God in spirit and in truth. 
And I want to talk to you this morning from this topic because we're dealing with truth. I want to talk to you this uh, this morning about, from this topic. Uh, don't believe the lie. Don't believe the lie. Now, when you look at the word lie, <clears throat> we can a lot of things probably come to mind when you think about the word. Look at the word lie. But when we look at it from by way of definition, this is one of the definitions that I saw this morning as it pertains to the word lie. Lie means to uh, that that which deceives or disappoints confidence. I like that. Because you know what? Truth is confidence. When you're confident in who you are, when God, when truth is uh, when truth is flowing through you, you are confident. There's nothing that can shake your confidence when truth is in you. That's why the scripture says and you should know the truth and the truth will make you free. Because the, the truth is you convinced and you confident that God said is God God is who He says He is and He's gonna do what He says He's gonna do. So you convinced. There's nothing. So when you when you convinced in the truth, then the external circumstances, conditions, issues that may arise, problems that may arise, should not shake your confidence if you convinced that God is true. So. When I say don't believe the lie, a lot of times what you see from your external situation is a lie. A lot of times it's a lie. Because why? We're, well, a lot of times our, our decisions are made based on what we see. Our, our emotions are stirred based on what we see. When we're, when, our, when we're not intact with God like we need to be, when God is not first and foremost in our life, and he's not front and center of our life, we allow, uh, because you, you're constantly in and out of condition, you're constantly in and out of circumstances, right? You're currently in one right now. Amen. But how you look at it is totally up to you. How you look at it and how you allow it to uh, fuel your emotions Amen. is totally up to you. And so your, your circumstance can tell you a flat out lie. And tell you that this thing is really bad. Yeah. It's worse than what you think it is. Mm -hmm. And if you let that lie fester in your mind, mm -hmm. it's going to stay there. And it's going to stay there. And if it stays there long enough and you don't filter it out, it's going to get here. Yeah. And once it gets there, you want, oh, God help us. Because now you are, you are allowing your external situation yeah. to dictate your life. Not God, not the truth. So, so why why am I believing that thing? That's why I'm stressed out. That's why I'm I'm exhausted. That's why my emotions are all over the place, and I got chemical imbalance in my body because because I'm allowing the external things of life to cloud my to cloud my view of God, to cloud what God has told me in His Word or what I know God has said to me in His Word. So Jesus said. How I know that you're my disciple is that you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Meaning that you won't be a bondage to, you won't, you won't be a slave to anything, not even your condition. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are slaves to their conditions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we talk about slavery on different levels, but a lot of people are slaves to their sickness. They take sickness and they become a slave to it. They become a slave to a financial situation, maybe a financial crisis. That's you become anything that 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 rules you and dominates you. You become a slave to it. No matter if it's a, if, it's, if it's an addiction, if it's if it's like I say, if it's something with, uh, with finances, if it's something with your family, if it is if it is ruling you and it, it is uh, uh, giving you orders in your life, that thing you are slave to it. We may not want to acknowledge that, but we are slave to it. You, be, you have been allowed that circumstance to be your master and to dictate to you how you should feel. But I promise you, if you understand that God is greater, come on, say that. God is greater. God is greater. God is greater. You, it's not just something we say to, to feel good. God is greater. He is greater. But you have to know that God is greater and not just greater in some things. He's greater in everything. His God is greater in everything. There is nothing in this world that God have not already overcome. Notice I said, have not already overcome. 
Do you know that, that, that this world, that, the, that the, the, uh, the chronological timing in this world is trying to catch up with God's timing? God is already ahead of you. Your thing already worked out. Your thing is already worked. That's why I went back. That's why I said to you this morning, the, the psalm said to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Why? Because when you're thankful for something, you're already thankful for what you got. You think of what he's already done for you. I'm thankful, and, and, but it's a, it's, a, it's a mental shift that has to take place. Your mind has to shift on a consistent basis for you to understand that God is truth. His word is truth. And I'm not going to believe whatever, uh, whatever the doctor's report said or whatever my financial statement read. I'm not going to, that's not going to be the thing that's going to fuel me. I need to be. I need to know that God is the source of my supply in everything. And when you start thinking on the, the goodness of God, and you start thinking on the things of God. Then guess what? You don't have. You leave no. You leave no room in your mind to worry. I say it again. When you're thinking on the goodness of God, when, when you meditate on God's goodness and His mercy all day long, what room you have in your mind to think about about worrying about a circumstance or a situation? You don't. And so I'm, I'm, I'm cussing it. And I'm telling you this because this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm at a place, I told God, just my mind, I just want my mind reprogrammed in everything. And so I'm going throughout the day just thanking God for everything. Amen. I'm thanking God for everything. I thank God for the trees. I thank God for the rain. You know, it's so easy for us to complain about the stuff that, uh, you know, we get we complain about even if it's raining consecutive days. God, thank you for the rain. The, uh, Pastor Smith said it well the other day. You know, we complain about the stuff, but we need the rain. Amen. Your grass is, the grass is dry. You need rain. Amen. The crops need rain. You don't have, the crops don't have no rain. You can't eat and have nourishment. Amen. So everything has value. So everything that God does has value. And you know what? Circumstances and conditions are not permanent. We need to get that in our minds. They are not permanent. They, they only become permanent if you make them permanent in your mind. Amen. You, got, you can't make those things permanent because they're not permanent. They're seasonal. They come and they go. They come and they they come and they go. Yeah. And if you allow the, the if you allow the condition to dictate what you're gonna do or not. You won't do anything. Amen. And then sometimes what you do won't be, it ain't what God wants you to do. And so in, in everything, the Bible said, in everything, but by prayer and supplication. Yeah. Now let's look at the word prayer because we got to understand what prayer truly is. Prayer is not you bringing your grocery list of problems. Right. That's not prayer. Prayer is not you bringing your laundry, your laundry list of of dirtiness that's going on in your life. That's not prayer. You know what prayer is? Prayer is when you take what God said and go back and remind him what he said about whatever condition it is. So I'm not praying about money. I'm not praying about sickness when the Bible clearly tells me that God healed me of sickness. When God is my, is my provider. You see what I'm saying? So when I'm praying, I'm not praying the problem. I'm praying the solution. I'm not praying the question. I'm praying the answer. Because the Bible has the solution. The Bible has the answer. The word has the, the, the remedy. That whatever you need, I'm going to find the remedy. And then, and you know what? It's not you coming up with this, in, this, uh, this amazing dialogue of words that say, oh, I just sound so holy. You can take one scripture and that's your prayer. And that one scripture that you're praying, if you believe the scripture, it'll change your life. It'll change your situation. That's prayer. Prayer is a moment of stillness. How many times, listen, I'm finding myself doing this more and more now. I'm finding myself doing this more and more now because I, I want God's truth to be on the in, 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 be in the inward parts. Come on. The Bible says this in, uh, in, in, in um, Psalm 119, verse 130. It says, I desire your truth in my inward parts. That's what Psalm 119 verse 130 says. I desire your truth in the inward parts. Now, let's, let, let, let's, let's talk about truth a little further because I talked about this on Wednesday night. You have what is called facts and then you have what is called truth. Facts changes. All right? Fact 
a fact can come across as a truth. But like, for instance, if I tell you that I'm going to meet you at the church at 10 o'clock, and I tell you this yesterday, if I told you this yesterday, we'll meet you at the church at 10 o'clock. And when 10 o'clock come, or before 10 o'clock get here, I call you and tell you, well, something came up, I'm not going to be able to meet you at 10. Mm -hmm. You see how that was a fact that I was going to meet you at 10. Uh -huh. But it changed due to the condition, or whatever the condition was. But let me tell you the difference with truth. When it's truth, truth doesn't change. That's why Jesus said, I am the truth. The way and the life. That's why he said, and you should know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Truth does not change. Facts do. That's important for you to know. Because when, when you go to the doctor and they run tests on you, that's facts. They only give you facts from test results. That's what they're giving you. So if you allow the facts to be the thing that speaks to you and not the truth, you won't be messed up. You want the truth to speak to you. So what, okay, that's the facts, but what does God say? Let's go to his word. Mm -hmm. And what does God say about that condition? What did he say about that condition? Because what you really have to understand is this, and I know this is deep, but I'm, I'm going to say this because, and I'm going to say this probably more and more and more so you can get this. It, it, it'll really sink. You are already healed. Say it. I'm already healed. I'm already healed. You know why you're already healed? Because your spirit first. Spirit don't have cancer. Amen. Y'all hear me this morning? Amen. Spirit don't have depression. No. Right. Spirit is not blind. Right. Spirit is not broke. No. Amen. Listen to what I'm telling you. We got it backwards. We let the flesh be the dominant and we put the spirit on the back burner. You are spirit first. You have a soul and you live in a body. All right? So when when they say you go to the doctor and you have a doctor's report, the doctor's report is only telling you what has attacked your body, not your spirit. Amen. So you got your spirit, man, got to rise up in you and say, don't take that. And then you tell your mind, I'm healed. You can, Listen, the more you convince your conscious mind and your, your heart, which is your subconscious, that you heal, then guess what? When you go back to the doctor next time, they're going to run some tests, and they won't find nothing. If you convince yourself, why? Because literally, and let me tell you, by science, y'all, your body is designed to heal itself. It is. You know what brings on most, more sickness? Is our thinking. The way we think. Our psyche is what caused so many people to be sick. Stress. And I know people say, oh, it's some good stress to it. I don't want no good stress. I don't want no stress. Amen. I know people say it, they say it sound, it sound politically correct. I don't want no stress. I don't want no tension. Amen. You know when you have tension, your head start hurting. When you have, and if it's bad enough, your neck start hurting. Mm -hmm. you, have you ever had tension so bad that when you try to turn your head, it's like you got a crook. That's really tension. Yeah. And a lot of you, and you're wondering, and, and your head is throbbing, and, and you think of, and you sit down quiet enough to think about what in the why am I thinking like that? And come to find out something that happened that day. And if you could just sit in a moment of quietness, to break that thing and know that God said in God's word, his truth is his word. And in his, in his word, the truth will rise up in you and say that God said, be still and know that I'm God. Yeah. That's his truth. So if I'm sitting quiet and know that God, I don't care what you encountered, the thing that you encountered that day could have been, it could to you it could have been bad. Yeah. Could have seemed bad. Yeah. But in my moment of stillness, yeah. in my moment, it, it don't even have to be an hour, it can be five minutes. In my moment of stillness, I'm being still to know that God, that God is God. Yeah. Oh, whatever I got going on. Yeah. I promise you it worked. Yeah. Be still. That's not just something that the psalmist wrote in the thing for us to get happy about. It is. It does make us happy. But it's also, it's telling you to do it. It says, be still. Be still. And know. Be still. And know it. Now, the word be is a state of being. Yeah. That's what it is. So he said, be still. 
So being still don't mean you jump in and just do all the talking. Being still means literally sit down and be still. Be quiet. Don't say nothing. nothing. Quiet. Mind quiet. Close your eyes. Close your mind. So whatever is going on, I'm telling you, it worked. How I many you know it worked? It worked. If you know it worked, then why you don't do it more? Hello. If you, the moment I ask you if it worked, y'all say yeah, it worked. Then why you don't do it more? You allow that thing. If it worked for, if it worked for this one, then it's gonna work for that. Right. That's right. If it worked for that, then it's gonna work for the next thing. Right. So if I know it, it keep working, then what I'm going to start finding myself doing is being quiet mm -hmm. and being still Amen. and listening to what God going to say to me next. Because you know why? He in you. Amen. Do you know that God is in you? Yeah. If God is in you, his wisdom is in you, his power is in you, his intelligence is in you. That means that if you sit quiet enough, God will give you the answer to your question. Amen. That means if you sit quiet enough, God will give you the result to your condition. Yeah. If you sit quiet enough, that God will give you the remedy to your sickness. Yeah. If you sit quiet enough. Sit quiet. Sit quiet. Sit quiet. And I'm talking about anything you have going on natural. Sit quiet. I had something happen the other day. I just love God. Our refrigerator at home we got the, we got one of those uh, water dispensers and, and ice makers, and uh, the, the 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 ice maker, well, the, the, the thing make ice, but the water dispenser was that, you know, and it it we changed the filter. I went went on online to check to see um, some things that could possibly be wrong. So I changed the water filter. They say sometimes the water filter, you change the water filter out, which it tells you, it prompts you when to change it, but it says sometimes the water filter can be have a, a, a malfunction. So I changed the water filter out, thinking that was gonna work. And I was like, something's still not right. The thing was making a, making a tapping noise. And so um, I just kept listening, and, and so I, I said, something, something ain't right. I changed the filter, uh, so, so, and something else. And so, uh, every now and then it was tapping, and why it was the reason it was tapping is because the the water the spit the water housing the the water dispenser housing is a it's a line that runs to that it gives the water permission to 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 make the ice, and so the tapping is 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 clogged somewhere because it can't get the water to the ice maker. Now I know the ice maker working. So what I did was, I said, well, let me see what's going on with it. So I, I, I opened the refrigerator up and I pushed on the, the, the filter. And then as I was pushing on the filter, I was dispensing water. And you can hear the water flowing. And then when you take my, I take my hand off of it, take the pressure off of it, it stopped working. It tapped. I said, okay, Lord, well, I know the problem is in the top. Listen to what I'm telling you. If you sit quiet, God will show you something. He'll talk to you about something. I'm like, because I was about to call, we got a guy, I got a guy that I have for to come in uh, that works on appliances. And I was telling Lady T, I said, I, I'm not doing that. I said, let me find out how much the park gonna cost. And I said, and I'm sitting at my work at my desk at work. And I said, okay, Lord. I said, it's the area that the, the sound I'm hearing is in the top. And then the Lord led me to go and order the water filter housing. Mm. I, I said, okay, now I ordered it. Now, I need you to show me how to fix it. Now listen to what I'm telling you. I said, I need you to show me how to fix it. Because I'm not calling nobody to come fix this. I'm gonna show you how to fix it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna want you to show me how to fix it. I said, you infinite, meaning that you all know you, there's no end to you, you infinite intelligence. And you flowing through me. So you gonna show me how to fix this. So I, I went to the place and I ordered it. it. Took two days for it to come in. We ain't got it. Asked the man, the guy said, "You ever put one of these?" He said, "Nah, I don't know. Not, I don't know." I said, "Okay, fine." So the Lord led me to a video, and I, it took me a minute to find it. But I found a video with my refrigerator and showed me what I needed to do and what all I need to do. And I told the Lord, I said, "Lord, I know what to do. I see what to do. I got the tools to do it." I said, "Give me an hour. I'm gonna have it working." And I did. I went there. I said, I went there, I pulled the thing out. I, was, I said, look at God. I pulled it out, pulled the panel from the back, the bottom of the refrigerator. I had to pop some things out. I had to pull the, 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 the water line out and unscrew something in the refrigerator. 
And I was convinced. When I tell you I was convinced that I say I paid sixty five dollars for the pork, I said it's gonna work. Mm -hmm. I said it's gonna work and it's gonna, it's gonna work like it's supposed to work. And so sure enough, the hour had come. Then I had to plug, plug the refrigerator back in. When I plugged the refrigerator back in, Jason, the water ain't never sound so good. <laughs> And see, how I know it's working, because how I know that it's working, it's supposed to make ice consistently. And that ice, that ice box, dispenser box, is supposed to be full of ice. If it's not full of ice, then you got a water problem. You got something with the flow. So uh, I pulled the tray out this morning, Pat Smith. Yeah. It's full of ice. Come on now. <laughs> so I say all of that to say, you... God has the answer to everything you got a question about. He has the solution to everything. And you know what? If you just listen to him, he saved you some money. <clears throat> he saved me some money. If I call home wanting to come do that, guess what they're going to do? Charge me $100. That they told you the park costs 65 you mean, gonna, you mean to tell me I'm going to give you $100 to come in and do what, I, do what I just did? You do it in 15, 20 minutes and you gone You took my $100. I had the same issue with the driver. Now he yelled at me when I was my driver, called the people three times. And I went, Sister, Sister McKinley, I went on, on Amazon and priced the heat element. You know how much the heat element was? 30 bucks. Come on. I say he won't get another hundred dollars from me. <laughs> no, he won't. Let that bad boy go out again. And I thank God for my partner. Because she went on and she said, I said, baby. I'm tired of taking this heat element out. I don't know what's wrong with this heat element on this dryer. It keeps drying. And for one thing, my dryer, the, the way my house is built, my my, my most older houses, most older homes, you're, you're, you gotta have a vent for your dryer, the lint to go. And it should, most of it, they go out. My house vent, the pipe go to the top of the house. Yours too. All right, so I said, I told, I told Lady T, I said, what seemed to be the problem? I thank God she might help me. While I'm working on the drive, she in the living room, on the, on the online looking. And say, baby, let's try this. She said, let's go get some lint balls. She said, those lint, dryer lint sheets, they, they, they generate moisture yeah. with your clothes. Yeah. And when you put that in your thing, it causes that, it causes that stuff to, to, uh, that moisture to get to your element. Because I, I pulled those elements out and it was burnt. Hot enough, that thing get hot. Yeah. And she said, let's try the lint balls. Because we were like, it's almost we was changing them things every three months. Yeah. And I think it's been past three months now. Yeah. And we, we got, that's all we use, lint balls. Because they dry. Yeah. So what, I'm, what am I saying? God show, was talking to her and he showed me how to fix it. So I pulled that heat element off, put it on there, and was dry and dry, the cold thing been drying ever since. And we got a big family. And that thing go all the time. I'm saying all of that to tell you the truth lies in you. Amen. So you don't have a problem. You just need to get quiet. Amen. I'm gonna say it to you again. You really don't have the problem you think you have. Get quiet, he'll give you the solution. You got whatever it is, he'll give it to you. Because why would we quote that he, the spirit of truth, will guide you into all truth? Why would we quote that if we don't believe it? He, when he, the spirit of truth, come, that's the Holy Spirit that lives in you to tell you, don't do that. I'll go get that. And he's like, what's well, Tony? What sense that man? He's going to give a man 30. And I watched that man change that heat element. And I'm like, I just gave him a hundred dollars. <laughs> Promise me he was going in 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. And with my hundred bucks. <laughs> I told him, to I said, he owed me 30 bucks. It's going to be here tomorrow. And I said, I'm going to fix it. And so I just thank God. I'm saying that because I'm paying attention to all. So you got to see God in everything. Say that with me. See, I have to see God in everything. See, we, we just see God as a, as, in, in a, as a spiritual entity. He ain't. God is in everything. Do you know God is in everything? We just said he's in the trees. He's in everything. 
But you have to see God in everything. God, how to do this? Show me how to do this. And I'm proud of myself. Because most times I've been calling my dad. And he could drive me and fix it. And I'm like, mm, I got this. I got this. And so I share that with you to let you know that you just need faith. And the truth that's in you. Do you know what faith is? Faith is not a deep religious word. Faith is literally your belief system. That's what faith is. Jesus said, if you have faith, your faith has made you whole. What he's basically saying is your belief that you are healed has made you healed. So your faith, I can't believe for you. Your faith is your conviction. You See, you convinced by your faith. Either you believe it or you don't. And see, what we try to do is, when we're trying to be super spiritual, we try to, we're trying to make something happen when the person on the, other, on the receiving end don't even believe. You're wasting time. Because the person don't even have a conviction that what, what they're praying for is, is going to actually happen. So what, 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 why? Why do I need to pray for you when you don't even believe it? Amen. Do you literally believe that God said he can do it? So why am I believing the lie of my circumstance? Why am, I, why am I believing that this thing is really what it says it is? No, it's not. Because when I read the Bible, this is what God said. And God said that there's no good thing that he would withhold from them that he loved. Yeah. So if God tells me there's no good then why am I letting this thing right here cause me to have sleepless nights? Amen. When all I need to do is find me a chair and be still. Be still. Be quiet. And sit quiet. And sitting quiet does not mean you're sitting in a chair with your mind all over the place. You got to get quiet in your mind. Because you know that's where all the activity is in your thought process. I've been telling y'all the last couple of weeks, everything is preceded by thought. Everything. What you're going to do next is preceded by thought. So if it's, everything is preceded by thought, you got to, you got to, you got to guard your mind. Day in and day out. Because yeah. you know what? Something always trying to get there. Am I right? Amen. You ever seen uh, an artist paint canvas? Mm -hmm. Guess what? They paint something constantly on a canvas. You got your mind is like a canvas. You constantly have something painted on your mind throughout the day. You got something in the job being programmed on your mind. You watch something on social media. If you ain't careful, that's programming your mind. Something on TV programming your mind. You come to church, you're being programmed. Somebody you meet in your circle, they programming your mind. You constantly got something going in and out of your mind. You got to make sure your filter working. Amen. Why? Because if the filter stop working, you will have some problems. So will. See, your, your filter gets all of the, the, the trash out. Y'all hear me this morning? The filter get all of the, the contamination. Your car has an oil filter. The oil filter's job is to grab all of the trash Amen. so it don't get in your engine and cause problems. Your mind is the engine that runs your life. Do you know that? That's why the, the, the enemy, do you know the word Satan? You know the word the word Satan means? When you look up the word Satan in Greek, you know what it means? It means to strike. That's what Satan means. It ain't a man with a pitchfork and a long tail. Satan means to strike. But what, where does he strike us? Here. He keeps striking your mind. That's how he set up strongholds in your mind. Because he beat on your mind with that negativity, and he beat on your mind with that negativity. He beat on your mind with somebody spoken to your life 15 years ago. He beat on your mind with that bad relationship you just got out of. He beat you, he beat you, he beat you, he beat you. That's what Satan is. It means to continually strike you. Amen. 
That's his battleground. And everything he does is, is guess what? And everything he tell you is a what? Lie. Because the Bible says he what? Is the father of lie. Father means source. He's the source of all lies. That's what he is. So why you believing? Why you believing the lie? It happened from the moment we was in the garden. Even in the garden. He deceived. It's deception. It breaks your, I just told you in the, in the, in the, in the definition, it breaks your confidence. Your confidence is your assurance of who you are and what you are and what God is in your life. When you when doubt comes, that ain't God. It's not. If doubt start coming to override your confidence, you better go into stillness. Are y'all hearing me? Because you're on the way to believe in something that ain't true. You gotta you go go, go into your go into your closet. Go into your closet. And do you know the scripture that says this? And I'm, all, I'm about to pray. The scripture that says, when you pray, enter into your closet. Do you know what the closet is? And, and from a standpoint, a standpoint of it being a, a metaphor, you know, you know what the scripture is talking about when it says the closet? It means your mind. The closet of your mind. You know why? Because when your closet and your mind is quiet, you hear clearly. You hear clearly. I'm challenging you all. Don't believe the lie. Don't believe the lie. If we're talking about truth and God is truth, then why are you believing the lie? I'm worried about losing my job. Why? You shouldn't be worried about losing your job if you if the truth is overriding in, you should be knowing the truth is that God is your source. So if God is your source, your job not. So they can take that. Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you? Who's your source? And the source not just talking about from a monetary standpoint. He's the source of your strength. He's the source of your energy. He's the source of your love. He's the source of your peace. He's a source of endless supply. God got endless supply. Come on, say that. God has endless supply. Your little bills don't move God. You want you don't want to bend out of shape behind it. You don't move that don't move God. I was telling someone the other day, I said, and we need to stop lying on God. You lie on God. Tell us, God let me go through this because I No, you signed that paper because you wanted to. God ain't tell you sign that. He ain't gonna lead you into that. You signed it because you wanted it. Now he merciful. And he just, but he ain't tell you to do that. And so, my, my grand my grandfather, Pastor Smith's dad, he been gone a few years now. He used to always say, "Son, when God gives you something, there's no strength attached." He would always say, "He always say." So when you sit up there saying God told you to do that, he say, "If you sit up there saying God told you to do it, you gonna do it, and you worry that ain't God." That's what my grandpa told me. He said, because when God gives you something, there ain't no strength attached, you're going to have peace. Amen. If you don't have no peace, go bring it back. <laughs> That's what he, that was, my grandma was a straight shooter. <laughs> that he, he said, if you if you had a, and got, got, a, got the audacity to stand up and testify, tell me, look, look what the Lord gave you, and then you go home and can't sleep. <laughs> God ain't telling you, and you can't sleep, you ain't got no peace. God ain't telling you to get that. You got it because you wanted it. He, 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 I never forgot that. He said, he give you, he give you something and it ain't no strength attached, son. It paid for it. He said, it ain't no strength attached. You, you ain't hurt trying to pay for it. Amen. 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 How many want that peace yeah. in everything? Mm -hmm. Lady T can tell you, I'm in this place now because I do this every day, all day. I'm sitting in stillness all day. All day, I'm sitting in stillness, and she can tell you, I be as I, I be such at peace. I be my mind is so at peace, and I just thank God for it. I thank God for it. I don't let nothing rattle me. Why? Do you want to be sick? Do you want to be sick? I don't want to be sick. 
And the majority of sickness comes from worry. The majority of it. All right? So stop believing the lie. Believe the truth. It's the truth that will make you free. I want to be free in every area of my life. I'm not hooping and hollering at you this morning. I'm just talking to you just to convince you that you need some moments of quietness and some moments of stillness. And you don't have to have an hour of it. Just sit quiet. Before you go to bed at night, sit quiet. If you go to bed at night and they say, Lord, I got this situation I'm bringing before you. And I know that you, uh, you are intelligent and you have all wisdom. You all know him. I have absolutely no idea what to do with this thing. I said, now I'm going to sit quiet and I'm going to let you just sit quiet in your presence before I go to bed. Now I'm going to sit quiet and I'm not waiting on him to give me the answer right then and there. I'm just going to sit quiet. I said, no, I'm going to sit quiet for about 15 minutes and then I'm going to go to bed. When I go to bed, I'm going to go to bed. And while I'm sleeping, you're going to speak to my subconscious. And you're going to talk to me and tell me what I'm going to do. And when I wake up in the morning, at whatever time I wake up in the morning, something clear is going to come to my thinking. I dare you to try it. I dare you to try it. See, you're going to bed with too much confusion. You're going to bed with too much. You're going to bed with too much stuff. And then you go to bed, you have a nightmare. And then you're waking up disturbed. And then people dressing up, talking about I got up on the wrong side of the bed. No, you didn't get up on the wrong, get up on the wrong side of the bed. You went to bed worried. So go to bed. Before you go to bed, quiet your spirit. Be still and know that I'm God. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, And he will keep you in perfect peace, those that keep their minds stayed on him. Uh, Psalm 20, 23 and 1 and two says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He making me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Do you know what still waters is? Quietness. That's what it's saying. So if God is saying, I'm leading you in that area, don't you think it's pretty important for you to sit in stillness? David said, I meditate on your word day and night that I may not sit against you. Then meditation is used in the Bible more than you know. So why, if God used, if God has the word meditation in the Bible all those times, do you think there's some importance to it? Amen. Praise God. Just sit quiet. quiet. You're going to be amazed of the answers that are going to come. Lord, what's, what's the problem you got, Tony? I'm tired of tapping on my refrigerator. <laughs> I didn't need you to show me what to do. Sit quiet, Tony. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to do this. Okay. It's done. Whatever it is, his, his hand's not short. God's hand's not short. His, your problem, a problem, you don't have no problem. You got an opportunity. Say that with me. Say, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. I have an opportunity. I have an opportunity. One more time. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. I have an opportunity. I have an opportunity. Three times a charm. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. I got an opportunity. I got an opportunity. Problems create opportunities. That's how you turn it around and flip it and make it work for you. Problems create opportunities. Amen. Amen. That problem with that refrigerator was an opportunity to show me that if anything else breaking this house, I'm going to fix it. Because <laughs> you can't fix it. Amen. It's creating opportunities. Amen? Amen. I want you just to just to sit still for a while. We're going to do this and, and that's going to be our prayer. Amen? Just sit still, relax. Come on, just relax. Hallelujah. Just relax. Come on. As your eyes are closed and you're taking your mind off of everything, everything, I don't know what it is, let it go, let it go, let it go. Close your eyes to it right now. 
You close your eyes, you close your, when your eyes are closed, you're closing your eyes to everything externally around you. You can't see anything around you because your eyes are closed. And what appears to be total darkness is because your eyes are closed. Once you close your eyes, then your mind closes to the things that may have been a concern. And I just want you to hear these words. Psalm 46 and 10 says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I want you just to relax. Let all of the tension move your head. Get the tension out of your neck. Loosen your arms. Just get. Just let your body relax. Just let it relax. Let it relax. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted. This is what God said. I am exalted above the nations. I am exalted above the nations. I'm exalted above the earth. And then Isaiah 26 and 3 says, and he will keep you in perfect peace. Those whose mind are stayed on him. Come on, stillness. And while you're doing that, stillness is coming over you right now. Stillness is the peace of God. It's stillness coming over you and quietness is coming over you right now. And Psalm 23, 1 and 2 says and God is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet streams. Quietness is coming over you right now. And while you're quiet, while you're quiet, your mind is quiet. Come on, just allow yourself just to breathe in your, in your stillness. That's it. That's it. This quietness. It's quietness. Quietness. Quiet from everything. God is my helper. <laughs> He's my helper. He's my helper. He's my helper. He's my helper. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father, I love you and I thank you. And I praise you right here, right now. Thank you that every good and perfect gift come from above. Thank you, Father, for your love, your kindness, your faithfulness, your, your, your consistency that you show to me every day. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your presence that is in me right here, right now. Thank you for your intelligence and your wisdom and your counsel that is in me right now. Father, I give it to you. Everything. I'm letting, I'm letting it go. And I'm trusting you, I'm trusting you to, show to show me what to do. As I sit in quietness, sit in quietness and, stillness, and stillness, even in, the, in, this week, in this week, you're going to show me what to do. And I'm going to have the solution to the problem. I'm going to have the instructions to the task. I'm going to have the wisdom and the clarity that I need to be successful in every good work. Worry is far from me. I will not worry this week. I will not be anxious this week because I rest in stillness. I rest in quietness. And while I'm still and while I'm quiet, your peace will be like a garment that I'm wearing. And it's going to be a peace that surpasses all of my understanding and my reasoning. Therefore, I trust you. I trust you. I lean and depend on you and not my own understanding. And so it is. It is done. It is well. It is so. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, give God a hand praise.
Amen. Amen. Now let me tell you what I saw happen, what I heard happen. As y'all were, as y'all were giving that declaration in y'all's prayer, I could feel, I could feel your energy change. Yeah. Why yeah. is that? Yeah. Why is that? Because you it, it was preceded by stillness. Yes. Amen? Amen. I dare you this week. Just, just, just sit in quietness. You don't have to talk all the time. Just sit quiet. Amen. 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 Sit quiet and let God tell you what to do. He'll show you. He ain't never wrong. He always right. Amen. Amen. Let's get give you an opportunity to to, to sow a seed on this morning. I'm getting you out of here kind of early today. Amen. 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 Uh, let's get whatever seed the Lord puts on your heart to give. Brother Dakota is coming around with the um, offering basket. If um, you have a, a check or cash, and um, we can put the ways of giving on the screen. Amen. Your seed, amen. The Bible tells us that our seed, um, in, in uh, Genesis 8 and 22, that the seed, as long as the earth remains, there should be seed time and harvest. And so we know that the seed has a, is, there's a principle uh, and a universal law that's set in place about the seed. So when you put a seed in the ground, the seed knows what to do. And it will bring forth a harvest. And it always comes back to you multiply. Whether that seed is negative or that seed is positive, it has to come back multiply. So the more you give, the more come back to you. If you give grudging, grudgingly, then how you receive is going to, you're going to receive the same thing in, in abundance. Amen. 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 And so God's principle of seed time and harvest remains. As long as we're here on the earth, it's going to remain. But the scripture also says in uh, Corinthians that we should not give out of necessity. We should not give grudgingly. We should not give even out of manipulation. No one should ever manipulate you to give. You, your giving should be solely based on your love for God. Amen? Amen. If you love God, you'll give to him. Amen. Amen? If you love God, you'll give to him. Because he loved us so much, he gave to us. Yes. Yes. So if you love God, you'll give to him. And the more you give to him, he's going to give you even more. Because he cannot, you can't be him giving. So I challenge you this morning. To let God speak to you in your heart on what to give. I've seen people give some significant love gifts because of God telling them to give it. No one on the stage manipulating them to give. No one telling them what to do. Just giving them an opportunity and let God speak to them. When God speaks to you on what to give, it will change your life. Amen. Amen. So let God speak to you on what to give. Amen. We thank God for all of you that tithes on this week that have come through. We pray the blessing of God over your tithes. Amen. And the seed that will go forth on this morning. Come on, I want you to hold your seed up. If you're giving electronically, you can hold your phone up. If you're giving by way of cash or check, you can hold your, your envelope up. And I want you to say this after me. Say, Father, I love you. And I thank you that you give seed to the soul and bread to the eater. Thank you for income coming into my home, coming into my hands. Every bit that you have blessed me with, I'm grateful. Come on, every bit that you, you bless me with, I'm grateful. Father, I'm not complaining. I'm grateful. I'm grateful because you are the source, not my job, not my employer, but you are my source. And because you are my source, this one seed that I'm sowing 
will come back to me in multiple streams. Come on, believe that. Believe that. That seed that I'm sowing this morning, I believe and I'm convinced that it's going to come back to me in multiple streams and multiple ways. Father, thank you. Thank you for the ability to give. And as your word declares, you said to give and it shall be given unto us. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Run it over. Will men give it to our bosom? Therefore, thank you for the, the destiny helpers that are coming with the resources to assist me in every good work. Thank you that I have integrity with money. And I'm not wasteful. I'm a steward of what you give me. And as I steward what you give me, more is coming. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.